fans, people on the interwebs, it's me, Sam of SG1, back for another Star Trek official Starships review. This will be my second take of this fucking video. Oh, computer problems, you know. Um, anyway, I'm going to be doing issue 7 of Star Trek, the official Starships collection, and it is a Katinga class battle cruiser operated by the KDF, the Klingon Defence Force. Klingon Katinga battle cruiser. Katinga class battle cruiser. You see, now I'm going to say this again. Klingons use battle cruisers and attack cruisers and birds of prey. It's the Romulans that use warbirds. Not Klingons. Romulans. Romulans use warbirds. Klingons use battle cruisers. Anyway. Yeah, operated by the Klingon Defence Force. Class Katinga. Long, uh, length um, 349 metres. I think it's about the length of Voyager, really. I think. Let me just check. Um... Bad memory at the moment. Uh, 343, 349, slightly longer than Voyager. Um, which I think, actually, these two are in scale with each other. Um, six phase disruptor cannons, two photon torpedo launchers, and concussive weapons, and cloaking device. Um, yep, basically the brief history of the Klingon um, battlecruiser. Uh, basically, the design, they kept the design from the 22nd century right up until the 24th. Um, and they only built the um, attack cruiser, the Vochak class attack cruiser, to keep up with Starfleet and the Romulans. So, you know, uh, Klingons are very stubborn in that respect. But yeah, various um, um, encounters they had during the, during the movie run. Um, it did appear on Star Trek Voyager, uh, and Next Generation, and Deep Space Nine as well. That, that one there was in an episode of Star Trek Voyager called Flashback. It is called the IKS Kelrick, and it is Kang's ship. Um, oh, I like this. Master Systems Display. Um, you usually find these in engineering, uh, but sometimes on the bridge, and it shows you all the engineering um, processes of the ship. You know, um, shows you the you know, nacelles, the what plasma conduits, all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, various things light up whenever there's a problem. And you've got tech specs, but you've got an upside down, you've got the bottom view, which is uh, nice to have the top view, but you know, there you go. Um, you know, front and back sections there. Um, very nice renders there. Um, then you've got filming the Katinga class for Star Trek the Motion Picture Chair. Um, built by. Uh, what did I build this one? Uh, well, Matt, Matt Jeffries designed the original and. Andrew Probert built the um, one for the Motion Picture. He also. Uh, redesigned it slightly um, to make it a little bit more menacing looking. Because um, the original um, Klingon battle cruiser, they had very little um, surface detail, whereas this one was updated with a lot more surface detail. Um, then you've got again the design process of how they designed the ship from the original in the original series. And like I said, they just modified it to make it a little bit more sort of realistic looking for the motion picture. Um, you can see things are sort of taking shape there, which is pretty cool. Um, then Andrew Probert did this wonderful Klingon bridge uh, painting. Uh, it's fantastic. I like that as a uh, as either a poster or an actual painting on the wall. That's that's cool. That. It it was designed to be a U-boat style environment that's been at sea way too long. Um, but yeah, I think it's. Uh, it accomplishes it great. I mean, I like the fact that the Klingon commander is sat, you know, on his own almost. Your first officer there, um, and then you've got all the very stations behind them there, which is pretty fucking cool. Um, then you've got, got filming the Katinga for Star Trek the Motion Picture. Um, I mean, I didn't know until recently that that, that they had a big Klingon insignia on the bottom there, which is pretty cool. Um, which is very cool in DD do. Um, yeah, the sort of showing you the tech basically telling you about the opening sequence of Star Trek the Motion Picture and the fact that they did this effect with using a Tesla coil, which is pretty fucking cool. No CG back then, back in 1979, kids. Uh, and then you've got um, on screen, um, you've got the very first movie appearance is the motion picture, TV appearances, um, Star Trek Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, and Voyager. Designed by Andrew Prober. Um But yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty fucking cool. I like it. 
Um, yeah. Oh, next week though, it's Excelsior. Can't wait for that bastard. So yeah, um, it's pretty cool. Now onto the model itself. Here it is, looking rather fucking badass, if I think you'll agree. The detail on this is wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. You can see where the torpedo launcher is there, the big round gaping maw. With all the detail be you know around it, um the detail of the bridge section at the top there, and all the detail on top, the detail of the connecting bridge, and then you've got the deflector dish here, which is cool. Um you've got the cloaking device generators there. You've got the which I've just found out recently as well, that should be a shuttle bay. You've got the um impulse engines, you've got the that would appear to be the warp core hatch. So if there's a problem with the warp core they can Jets and that, and a warp core will come flying out. A single warp core, not many. Um, you've got the impulse engines there, and you've got the wonderful detail on the bottom. Look at that panel in there, that boys and girls. That is wonderful, wonderful. You've even got the same pattern on the top there. Now, I have a few nitpicks with this, only a couple. Number one, there's no Klingon insignia anywhere on it, which is a bit of a shame. There should be one on the wing there. There should also be a logo um, of which house it belongs to. And um, the nacelles are not light piped. There's no green cyan in there. That's just a nitpick, it really is. I mean, I can probably get a Klingon, um, a small Klingon uh, decal from somewhere. But other than that, fan fucking tastic. It really is a nice looking ship. It really does look fucking beefy, meaty, and will kick your assy, you know. Um, um, now, again, the model, the base it comes with is pretty cool. It's just a base, but again, this one is very loose as well. It's not as loose as Voyager, but it is. It is pretty loose, which I'm a bit frightened about. Yeah, it's not. It doesn't quite snap. See what I mean? Um, it's not quite as. It's not quite as tight as the others, which is a bit of a shame. But again, standard base with Klingon getting a battle cruiser on the bottom as well, which they finally spelt it right on there. <laughs> um, but again, you put the base together thusly, and this just connects like oh shit, missed like so, and he stands rather nicely. Actually, I think I think it's one of the best ones this one so far, apart from the few minor like like say Klingon symbols missing and stuff like that. But other than that. Fucking brilliant. It really is. It's bigger than Romulan Warbird as well. But yeah, um, it's getting better. It's getting better and better and better. Um, Excelsior next, and then Defiant. Can't wait for those. So, I will see you all later, and goodbye!